Go. Good morning. Today is February 3rd, 2016, and we are at Balboa High School in the Green Room. Today we are hosting our second kitchen meeting. And for those unfamiliar with the kitchen meeting, the kitchen has a lot of significance to the black community because back in slave days, this is where black folks got together and congregated um, to share information that was relevant to their survival. And then going forward, future generations, the kitchen is just the mainstay of where black families interact, check on each other's day, you know, and really, educate and, and nourish souls, minds, bodies, physically, spiritually, etc. So that's how you came up with the title for the uh, program? Absolutely. So it's Black History Month. We wanted to make sure we had something culturally relevant um, and so thus the kitchen meeting. And this is the second one that Balboa has high, high School has hosted. Coach Gray has um, intertwined Black History Month with the kitchen meeting for the second time in six years. Can you tell us what your relationship to Coach Gray is? I am his daughter. And your name is? My name is Dr. Maisha Gray Diggs. And we thank you very much. We look forward to the program. And look forward, uh, thank you very much for having us over here. We're going to tell me that again. You sit down at the dinner table and took and take care of business. Your parents would get on you about what happened during the day, uh, what was going to happen tomorrow, what you had to do. I mean, that was just the issue of a kitchen meeting. You had to be home by 6 o'clock. Or you had to be home by the time the lights start coming on. Because your daddy was coming home, and as soon as he washed up, it was dinner time. He said the blessing, you ate, you got finished, you cleaned up, did your homework, went to bed. So the kitchen was a place that everybody sort took of... Took care of business. That's where they took care of business. And a lot of people don't understand. I say, they ask me where I'm from. I say, I'm from South of America. <laughs> and they say, where is that? What country? I say, Texas. San Antonio, Texas. San Marcos, Texas. Austin, Texas. It's my stomping ground. So you refer to that as South of South America? South of America. <laughs> because at one time, it, it took you for days to get out of Texas. And then Alaska came in, which made uh, Texas the second largest state. Uh -huh. you know, coming to California was an eye awakening. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Larry Gray. And he's, uh, are you uh, considered a coach or a teacher here? I'm both. Uh -huh. I'm uh -huh. both here at Balboa High School. And how long have you been here, Mr. Gray? 20 years. Okay. All right. 20 years. So you have about 20 more left to, before you retire. No, right? sir. <laughs> no, sir. No, we sir. We just met your wonderful, your lovely daughter, and we're glad that she's here to help you out. So we hope that the program goes well. We sure it will. Well, we appreciate having her here. She's been a big help since she's been here with us and the staff, putting this together for the African American and black uh, youth. Uh, it's needed. And Fantastic. Yeah. So yeah, that's why we're doing this today. We appreciate you doing this for us. Okay, now the name of this is once again is called the Kitchen the African American Black African American Kitchen Meat. Okay, all right. And we're at Balboa High School in San Francisco, California. You just heard from Mr. Larry Gray. Thank you. Thank you. And everybody on this side to come in and fill in all the chairs up front and then go start for the second row and then the third row. So do that now. Let's go. Except the seniors. The seniors can sit in the far, not in the far back, but the last row, whatever the last row is. So let's go. Let's move quickly. Let's go. So we have three chairs right here. We have three, oh, four chairs. Jeopardy. Who is, who is Jesse 
moving. That is moving. Do you know Jackie Robinson? 
on, on Instagram, all the Snapchats and all that stuff can wait, okay? All the text messages. And back, whoever's texting you, it'll make them want you more if you don't respond like right away. You'll keep them in suspense. I'm giving you a little hint, okay? Number four. Thank you, Kaylani. I know you understand. Number four. No side talking, okay? Please do not engage in side talking. Okay, we tried to do the best that we could to split you up. We did the apples and the white name tags, but some of you are still sitting next to somebody that's going to tempt you to talk. Please don't do that, okay? And then respect other, uh, respect the opinions of others. So the thing is, somebody might ask a question that you think is a no duh, you know, situation, or they might make a comment that you don't agree with. We're going to ask that you hold the lips smacking, eyes rolling, all that stuff that sends off the vibe that the person is an idiot. You don't need to do that, okay? Now, in baseball, there's three strikes. We're not going to give you three opportunities. Some people take advantage of the three strikes, like, you know, you'll call somebody a name, oh, oh, Vic, that was once, I got two more times, you know what I'm saying? And so the thing is, you know, we, we're not going to... Look at the three strikes as Geico insurance. Nobody crashes their car on purpose and be like, well, I'm covered, I got three more accidents. You have, oftentimes, you're gonna have one time, okay? Um, you have one time to do something off the wall, and I, I have a feeling we're gonna make an example out of somebody. So maybe we might give you a pass, and then maybe we'll probably ask you to leave. And so security is already ready, Cowboy or Danny or somebody's gonna come down and just send you back to class, okay? We have a day full of activities lined up for you, and we don't want you to mess it up. A lot of thought, I almost said, not thought, almost, a lot of thought, excuse me, I have problems. A lot of thought, brain power, I'll just say that. <clears throat> a lot of brain energy and thought has gone into this day, okay, for you all. And I heard some of you outside in line, you were saying, you know, wow, look at all these black people. Like, can you believe it and all that stuff? Can, the thing is, can you believe it? That we actually pulled this off, that the principal allowed us to do this, okay? So we don't want you to jeopardize this. And I want you to, first of all, give yourselves a hand for coming down here. Don't say that, give yourself a real, that was dry. I need to even clap, okay? Thank you. I'm gonna say this, okay? It, a lot of uh, planning went into this. We have guest speakers here. We have uh, raffles that we're going to give out. Listen, we have raffles. Uh, we have prizes that are going to go with those raffles. We have some good prizes. I'm talking about raffles. You can go somewhere and swipe the card, okay? And, and redeem your prize, okay? It ain't going to be cash, okay? So here's the thing. Shh. All right, so here's the thing. So these are the house rules. As you look at these five things, is there anything else that we need to add that we overlook that you think that we should add? Anybody, you can raise your hand and let us know. Maybe it's something else that we should know about that might come up. And one more thing, I want to say this. If you are, let's say, for example, you're side talking with somebody, then you laugh at something that they say. If you have a speaker up here, they may misinterpret that as, oh, they're laughing at me. Um, the speakers that are coming, some of them are used to talking to a large group of people. Some of them are not. And we don't want to do anything to make anybody feel uncomfortable. So can we, will you join us in agreeing to these rules till 1 o'clock, 104? That's how long you'll be here. Isn't that something? Will you all agree? I need a yes or a no. If you agree, say yes. yes. If you agree, say yes. I want you to say it like you mean it. If you agree, say yes. yes. If you agree, say I agree. Okay. Now, if you didn't say anything, if your actions don't line up, we'll get rid of you. And if you did agree and your actions don't line up, we will get you out of here, okay? So, again, keep your hands to yourself. You're not on vacation, my brother. Please take your leg. Thank you. Somebody else has to sit there, you know? So, be mindful of that, okay? Thank you. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Travis. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Can you move those ground rules to the side? So I did a, uh, a quick introduction for those of you who are here early. My name is Dr. Maisha Rizzi. 
By day, my bio is in there, but by day I work at the Clorox company where I manage innovation for charcoal and fresh day. So if you have a cat, you probably use a lot of kitty litter. And if your mom and dad and grandma and dad barbecue, you likely use Kingsford. And so you just need to know there's some black people responsible for making sure that you get the best part of possible. And so I have the pleasure today to serve as your mistress of ceremonies. I will help make sure we keep this program on time. As our speakers come in, they'll be taking these seats and say reserves to the front. You know, Mr. Travis talked about the time and the effort that went into prepare for you guys today. And so this is your agenda. So we are awaiting the principal, uh, who should be here in a minute, to welcome you. We will be on our best behavior. She will then leave, because last time I checked, your principal wasn't black. So she will be leaving. Real talk. She will be leaving the kitchen meeting, because this is about us, for us, by us, and we're going to be right for us today. So she will come in, she will welcome, and then she will be exit stage to the left. You will still be on your best behavior whether she's in here or not. Then we will move through our speaker presentation. So we've asked all of our speakers today to talk to you about lessons learned along the way. We will have lunch, so the caterer should be in here shortly to deliver lunch. Yes, you will have lunch that did not come from the USDA. It will be a good lunch. So if you get put out, you won't get your good lunch. Your good lunch will be provided by a black caterer. Why? Again, it's for us, by us, about us, so we don't support black business today and everything that we do. Your caterer will be providing you with a good soul food lunch that met all the requirements. So if the job should be coming in here and get soda, you won't get soda. I know the school rules. I thought we were doing And then we will do a wrap up, and as Mr. Mr. Travis talked about, we will have the raffle, etc. So I am waiting on your principal to walk in. Is she at the door? Kevin, can you get that door? I promise her I'm ready on her. I'm coming. We've run on time, so I'm trying to be here by her. She doesn't know! Thank you. 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 To enjoy a dinner, moving yourselves forward with your reality. And um, the reality is that this institution, like most institutions, does not do a good enough job in serving you students. And it's time that we all found better ways to do that. We're going to need your help. Last, uh, last week, the uh, teachers, all, we had a professional development and we busted out some data. We took all of the grades that were posted by this institution in the fall semester. And those semester grades, you know, if you're going to come to the end, next week's the end of the grading period, that's kind of a red flag. It's a grade, there's another grading period, the fifth grading period, and then the sixth grading period, and all that ends up together with the final exam to make that all important grade that semester. That's the one that goes in your transcript. That's the one that the colleges look at, that the employers look at. It's the one that counts. So a grade is the culmination of our teaching and the culmination of your learning for that semester. Because high school, we say it's four years, but it's eight individual semesters. And the statistics, when we looked at the grades, and there are just five kinds, an A, which is excellent, a B, above average, a C is average, a D is below average, and F is failing to measure up. F is separate in that you don't get the five credits for the class and you have to take it over. B above, you have the credits. You can't play sports if you just have all Ds, but you do get the same diploma. You walk across the stage, you get the same diploma, you know, Cs, Bs, As. When we looked at that data, we looked at it in terms of ethnicity and gender. Who's getting the A's? Who are getting the C's and the F's? And again, and you already know what this is, so you can tell me what we looked at and what we saw. The troubling reality is that most of the higher grades are not earned by students of color. And in fact, 
most of the D's and F's are earned by students of color. We have 30% of students in this school are like uh, Hispanic. 52% of all the F's, 52% were earned by Hispanic students. And we have one department where not one A, not one A was earned by an African American student. So it's shocking, it's sobering, but it's not new. And we keep talking about it and not doing anything about it. And I want to tell you, here at Balboa, we are <clears throat> committed to disrupting systemic oppression. We need your help. I know that I've talked to some of you. What is it? What has to be happening in a classroom if you want to go there? Because for students who don't want to go to class, it's, it's an issue. If it was interesting and relevant, you'd be in. So um, I just want to acknowledge things are not as they should be. We are working on it. We don't have answers. I'm not going to be able to come up with the answer without your help. So I so appreciate that today you get to spend a day talking about reality and the future and what you can do and what you can do. And um, you know, some of you are already in a small group that I'm um, meeting with on Fridays talking about what's wrong with the school and what needs to happen to make it right. And I just want you to know that I am dead serious. There are no wrong answers. There are no disrespectful answers. You communicate with me any way that you can. Email, come to my office, talk to Mr. Gray, you can tell me, whatever. But I need to know. I need to know for you, and I need to know for all the students who are already down there. So um, have a good day, you beautiful students. And thank you so much. You're going to have a great day sharing with you. Um, Speakers, and I'm going to say that what Ms. Ritter talked about is not just about at Balboa. But her message means that you guys still have hope. There are things that you guys will accomplish. And today does not define who you are going to be in the future. So I need you to shake off the fact that the colored students are performing poorer than the other students. And you guys will get to talk to our speakers today about lessons they learned along the way. I'm sure that not all of them are the top performing students in their class. And I will say that you being in this situation of being the minority here at Balboa, you will still be the minority. I am the highest ranking black woman in Clorox Research and Development. Me. Me with my blue hair and my jazzy heels. And I will come in and I demand respect and people have to listen because I've done some things along the way to put myself in a place where they have to listen to the little black girl. So wherever you are today in your journey will not define where you're going. So I want you to hear what Ms. Ritter said, but understand that our speakers are going to talk to you about a journey, right? Because it's not a race, it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. Y'all have a lot of life to live to get where you want to get, so that you can call the shots. Like, I like to call the shots. I like nice things, I drive a nice car, there are things I want to do, but I, I went to school to make that happen, okay? So I'm going to turn it over to our first speaker, who I think is Mr. Frederick Wilson. Balboa. Hello, Balboa. Uh, it's an honor to be here. Uh, I give honor to God. Uh, thank you, Mr. Gray, and uh, all the leaders for allowing me to be here to talk to you today. It's an honor to be here for you. I, as you can see, I'm dressed for the occasion. I've got my origin booth. All right. <laughs> and uh, I, you know, I was sitting there uh, listening to the lady talk, principal, and uh, looking at you guys, and I just want to really let you know, I don't even know you, but I really love you, first of all, I really care about you. You know, that doesn't really sound kind of weird, but that just means that I'm here to let you know that you can make it. I uh, graduated in 82, uh, a long time ago, and uh, after I graduated, my mom passed away, and it just pretty much messed up my whole world uh, from that point. I mean, I was planning on going to the Indian game, you know, and, uh, or at least trying to make it and stuff like that. But when she had passed away, 
it changed my whole life and got me caught up in a whole bunch of things I should have got, should have got caught in, into. But as time went on, it came down to one thing. It's the same thing that you have today. When she was talking about the grades, that was kind of an alarming situation to hear. Because I know we as a people, that greatness is on the inside of us, right? Look at your neighbor and say, greatness. Come on, look at your neighbor. Say, greatness is inside of you. Come on, somebody. down to one thing, whether you want to be successful in whatever you want to be, it comes down to one thing, and that is a choice. When well, like I said, my mom passed away, and I got caught up in the wrong thing. I finally got to a point where I made a choice to change what I was doing. And when I made that change, I ended up opening up a, a landscape contracting business. I started doing landscaping, and uh, a lot of people didn't want me to do it or was not encouraging me to do it, but I knew exactly what I wanted to do. So I began to teach myself. I began to read books. I began to do a lot of study on it. And I opened up a landscape company and uh, was making like 10000 bucks a month just doing landscaping. How many of you can use $10,000 a month right now? <laughs> and all it was was a choice. It's a simple choice. It's a simple uh, decision that you have to make. My son, who was uh, doing bad in school at one time, and uh, had to go talk to him about his grades, bought him home. I said, listen, man, you got to make a decision what you're going to do. He had all F's when he came to live with me. You know, that's just not acceptable. Because one thing we got to realize is there was people that died for us a long time ago, and they fought for us to have the freedoms. And we can't forget that. We can't forget it. You got to remind yourself that somebody got killed for this choice that you have today. And so I told him that you got to make a choice. And from that point, he ended up getting his grades from, uh, from, an F, from an F to an A, and now he's doing a landscaping company. So yeah, the bottom line is, 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 is we have to make a choice. And it's very simple. You know, you have to decide today, not tomorrow. You have to say, today, I'm going to take one day at a time, and I'm going to make whatever effort I can to make my grades better, because it's only going to benefit you, right? I mean, how many of you want to be wealthy? How many of you want to be successful? Guess what? It's your choice. It's all up to you. You know, the fights that we had a long time ago, we don't have those same fights today. We have fights, but, you know, we have better choices today. So we have to take advantage of those choices. So I got into landscaping, I was making ten thousand dollars a month, and I uh, got burnt out and tired because I was working hard. Three years later, I was craving something else. I was trying to do uh, other stuff. So I got into inventing stuff and stuff like that, and, and uh, I was trying to figure out, okay, what can I do? And the light bulb turned on, and I ended up inventing this tracking device so you can track your bike. Somebody steal it. It's, uh, it goes in the steering tube, it goes to have reflectors. And anytime your bike moves, you get an alert on your phone, and it'll let you know where it's at and stuff like that. So we're making a whole lot of money with that as well. And, stuff. So, and then even I've even gotten into uh, taking that same device, and we're now getting it built where it's going to be in the airport so people's luggages get lost. So if they love to just, you know, get misplaced, they can go on their phone and actually track it. And all of that came about was just by me making 
a choice. I decided what I wanted to do and just started learning how to do it. So I just wanted to say that to you guys, uh, that you know, you got, your future is so bright. You have so much promise. You got, anybody play sports here? Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's all a choice, y'all. I'm telling you. I mean, uh, I'm, I don't know how many, how much money I'm going to probably make off of the device, but it's going to be a whole lot of money. And it's all about just the choice, you know. And you've got to make it happen, you know. If you see yourself at a point where you're not happy, just decide today, I'm gonna make a better decision tomorrow, you know? I've got it because it's only gonna benefit you. When you get to a certain age, nobody's gonna do it for you. Nobody's gonna tell you what to do, you know, when you become grown, you have to pretty much do it. So train yourself right now that I'm gonna get these grades, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna, because you'll see, when you get to a certain point, it's gonna only benefit you. I have three sons right now that's uh, in college. One's at UC Merced, others at UC Riverside, the other one's at University of uh, King's University. And uh, it just all came down to them making a decision to really cut back on some of the stuff that they were doing, you know? Like, they don't uh, spend a lot of time on the computers, they don't party a lot, they don't do a lot of stuff that's gonna distract them from the goal. You can, you can, you'll have a lot of fun with that later, but if your grades are not up, then you cut yourself short. And that's not what you want to do, okay? All right, just want to let you know that I love you and that uh, you can make it. I made it, you know, graduated in 82 and uh, started the company and you just do really good. So, uh, if you need me, you know, put my number up, you can always call me and I'll do whatever I can to help you out, okay? okay. <laughs>
think about having lunch with Mr. Wilson. So we you know, capture all these thoughts. If you hear our speakers, they'll be here with us for lunch. And so if you need to do kind of a more one-on-one -on -one thing, you can strategically decide where you sit for lunch. So our next speaker, some of you who play football know this person quite well. Um, this double also as Coach Wester. But today he's going to just be Mr. Wester. Um, he is an employment college counselor at City College of San Francisco. So Coach Wester, this is Thank you, everybody. Uh, actually, as an employment counselor, I'm a college education counselor. I help you get to college, help you graduate from college, and also transfer to a full university. And also, if I can't help you get the fund, I'll also help you do that as well. I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. I was born and raised here in San Francisco. Grew up in Sunnydale, uh, Sunnydale Projects. Very good to see you. I've been two years. I grew up in Sunnydale, two and a half years old. Sunnydale, Mr. Um, Sunnydale, I'm called Sunnydale, California. Okay. We all call the swamp. In the Senate. Okay. When we had grass, you know, people were parking all over the you house, know, you know, lying there to be honest. Just a little bit about myself. Okay. Went to John McKellar Elementary School, which is now child, um, John McKellar Child Care Center. Went to Burbank um, Junior High School, which is now June Jordan. It's some other school. Got more high school class of eight. Okay. Journey to yes. Was I always a great student? No. Determined school? Yes. Okay. Did I fail? Did I flunk? No. I stayed at Brown, but maybe a 2.5, maybe 2.6, going through high school. My first year of college, went to a student store for black college. Knew the way. Thought I had it all, you know, thought I, you know, thought I knew it all. Thought I'd tell you, break up. Okay. It's nothing to laugh about. It's nothing to laugh about. It happens. Okay? I almost flunked out my first year of college, which I did. Okay? Ladies, let me just touch that feeling right over there. Went to school, tried to adjust, going to, going to the country, going to a historical black college, trying to adjust coming from uh, the Bay Area, going to the South. They got a room away. They had teachers, did, like I said, they, they loved it, but the other day it was very hard. Okay? Meaning that when you came to class, if you came five minutes late, they would say, Mr. Webster, what you doing? I said, I'm coming to class. No, you're not. Get the hell out of here. My mouth holds you. What? I need you guys to write me an essay. So I call myself writing an essay. The instructor got my, my essay. She said, Mr. Webster, what is this? What is the essay? No, it's not. She grabbed, she brought that paper up to her right back at me. She broke I said, get out. Yeah, it was cold. The thing is, what I thought I knew, didn't know. Because I didn't take the time to really learn how to write a decent essay. But by the time I got out of the classroom, I learned how to write a decent essay. Yes, decent essay. Although I did get a D in the classroom, because all my, almost all my papers were D work. Okay? So my thing is that that first year came back home with a one point something average GPA. Five, my decent essay, four, five, five. Because I never seen, I mean, my grades never been up under a 2.0. I took the four part up. I started all over. Just because I failed one, once doesn't mean school wasn't for me. It's because I just had to readjust myself. Went away that first year of college, came back different. Knowing what I, what I needed and what I had to do. Went back up, signed up to City College San Francisco that day. Been ready for the summer. Started all over again. Took placement tests. Started a lower level English course. Lower level math course. Okay, 1984, it's my grandma, um, but I changed. Now, the thing is, I would start off in broadcasting, that was my love. But hanging lights in the theaters, working TV cameras, okay, becoming a producer. What changed it, I started coaching guys like these guys in the back. Came up to Balfour High School back in 82, start coaching, helping out um, with the football team. These guys know the first thing about going to college. They just think they're going to be a scholarship playing football. Great athletes, some of the best athletes I ever saw. They said, oh, coach, I'm giving me a scholarship. I'm giving me a scholarship. I said, well, what's your grades like? Well, man, I'm, I'm, I'm doing okay. I got 2.0. I 
Okay, uh, my repair for college. Uh, what? I haven't taken the SAT test yet. What? What's the SAT test? I said, well, it's the aptitude test to you know, see if you can you know, see if you, uh, qualify for college. I went, what? I said, man, we just got a lot of work to do. So all of a sudden, these guys, you know, the first thing, this is their senior year. So I said, you know what, we'll see you up at City College, San Francisco. So I said, you know, I got to City College. We said, yeah, well, someone went on to play for uh, four years ago, play for four years ago. But the thing is, they didn't know anything about the SAT test. They didn't know anything about going, really going to college, except Oh, we get a scholarship and then they're, they're there. They're really preparing. Okay? Preparation starts now. How many freshmen here? Freshmen? It starts now. Okay? Sophomores, it starts now. It's don't start off with us and girl. I will tell you my senior year and I'm going to take care of this. No. Some of you brilliant guys, I know some of you guys that are brilliant. I know some of you guys. But you guys took the I mean, right now, I'm kind of I'm getting on you guys. Some of you guys took the road, road you decided not to do nothing, go to class. Some of you guys did the work thing, turn your work in. That's stupid. I'm not saying you're stupid, that is stupid. Because my thing is, if you did the work, just like if I went to work, did my work, did some of my time sheet in, and all of a sudden I don't get paid. It doesn't make sense. Now, I'm going back with me. Now, I was a smart student. I went to Mexico College. 2.8, 2.9. By last year, um, 80, 83 going to 84, got it um, 2.0. Uh, Transferred to San Francisco State University. But I changed, my, I changed my major because I found out that more of my players didn't know nothing about going to school, going to college. They didn't know anything about building their grades up so they could, um, like I said, at least graduate. So I dedicated my time to, you know, change my major from broadcasting to counseling. So I can help my players, young brothers like yourself, and young ladies like yourself, to get to college. Was it long, long? Yes, it was. So I struggled through my, my, my sophomore and junior, my sophomore, my, uh, junior, my senior year of college, and then I struggled through my master's degree. But I was determined to get through. I almost fucked out of math, the master's school, the master's program. Okay, almost fucked out of the master's program. But I was determined. I got help. My thing, my thing is, you have to learn how to ask for help, folks. Help. That means if you're not doing well, go talk to your teachers. Go talk to someone that you know that can help you out. When I was at high school, I this math teacher, I thought she was terrible. She could, uh, so my thing is, she'll start off on one side of the uh, thousand, uh, the fourth, finish at the other end. I, got, I had to ask her, how did you get from one end to that end? She so, said, well, she, she can't even teach now. She got from one end to the other end. I had to go back to my teacher that taught me basic math, Mr. Soleil. You remember Mr. Soleil, young Fred? I said, Mr. Lane, how do you get, how do you do this equation? He broke it down to so elementary. Then I was like, is that all? He said, well, it depends on who teaches you, Mr. Webster. So all of a sudden, you make sure he has to find a teacher that's going to help you get to where you need to go. Okay? Find somebody, or somebody that you can identify with that can help you get from point A to point B. Okay? Get a friend. Or somebody in, in your classroom that also can help you. I always say, have three people in your life. Somebody that can give you guidance. Somebody that can push you, like, like, your, like your teammate, that can push you to get to that next level. Like a competition. The only thing is a friendly competition. Brother, man, if I can you, I say, I, I bet you can't get in if I can get in. Oh, yes, I can. Okay? There's somebody that you can also help bring along as well. Encourage. Somebody that you can encourage. That means if you have a young brother or sister, if you have a young cousin, or not that you are you friends somebody that's here in your school, your senior, that's fresh with coming up. Help that person get through school. Because that's what I did. Got the best, I got all the counsel that I needed up in City College, San Francisco. They probably was on their way when I was talking about going to the council. Also, we friend another friend that, uh, that Larry Gray really knows, Bob Tina. Older guy, almost the same situation now. Actually, he told me his story, almost like my story. I, I, I gave a good friend from my friend, I called him home, he brought me up on his wing, see he's tied over here at James Dimon, uh, anybody that went to Bread Hart Elementary School, he probably was a teacher at Bread Hart back in the day. This man, he encouraged me, he brought me up on the wing, he taught me, he showed me how to do things. He brought me to find myself as a student and also as a person, uh, as, a, uh, um, as a man, okay, coming up here and um, developing my skills as a counselor.
And you're also as a teacher. And this is somebody that can give you guidance. You can also have a friend that also can push each other, trying to make each other better. Okay? And then also, encouraging young guy like Sis. Always try to help somebody that can help them along the way as well. My love for Balboa High School, I mean, I've been around Balboa High School from 92 to, to uh, late 92. Left, came back, 2007, and back here today. So I was always around Balboa High School doing everything, okay? Being mentors. But the thing is, folks, you guys got to want You got to want No one's going to give it to you. No one's going to give it to you. You got to want Okay? Like I said, well, I, somebody said, I'm going to do a whole bunch of things. Start off with the thing that you're passionate about. The thing that you're passionate about, that's what's going to be, your, that's gonna be that, that uh, torch that's going to get you moving. Okay? You said, I don't know what I want to do, but my baby start working on what you want to do. Start working on it. Well, I'm going to be a basketball player. My thing is that you got to put that time in. That means, you, know, you, gotta, you guys look at Steph Curry, he puts that time in. Any, any good athlete puts that extra time in. Just like whatever you want to do, you got to put that extra time in. Instead of tweeting and all that stuff, put that time in. That means you got to forsake. I mean, for say, forget everybody else. I mean, that social time, and put that time in. In order for it to be the best of what you're doing, you got to put that time in. I mean, there's that time, there's that time that I want to go to parties on the weekend. Beach parties. Pool parties. I had to say, man, like I said, I was the best for you. I was in the Bible, like I said, if I wanted to pass that class on Saturday, you know, on Monday, I had to we in the library on Saturdays. We in the library at church. At church, we go to the San Francisco State Library. We stayed open until like um, 10 o'clock at night. Catching the bus, at the time it was 15. Catching the 29 to the 15 on home. 11 o'clock at night, putting that time in. Okay. We didn't have to get up and go to work on the room the week after, after class. But going back, going back to the library. Because that was the dedication I had. Because I knew I would have worked what I wanted to do. I didn't want to stay in Senegal the rest of my life. Not saying nothing wrong, but my thing is, I knew I would do something. I'd need to go, I'd say, I'll do, I'll, I'll, I'll do the projects. At a certain time, you've got to grow certain things. So when I go home, and when I'm home, and all of a sudden I see myself depressed, and that, you know, my surroundings, it was time for me to leave. But you gotta be the fellow folks, you gotta be determined. Don't be complacent to where you are. We just talked about that in the, in the, um, in the um, conference room. Be complacent. Don't be don't just settle for where you are. Grow. You wanna be successful? That means you gotta you gotta get out your comfort zone. You gotta get to that next level. It's not gonna be all, it's not gonna always be sweet. The comfort, when you get out your comfort zone, then you see what you're made out of. Okay? Now, let me tell you how this is it. For, I'm going to tell you one thing for you before I go. In high school, it's all about the room. When you get to college, it's all about you. Because then you're going to see you made up with your friends, not going to be there with you. One of my close best friends, we, see, we, we said we're going to pray for together. Oh. <laughs> how different was it? He said, all of a sudden, I got accepted to pray for you. He got accepted to the University of Washington. You know where you decided to go? University of Washington. I ain't going to pray by myself. Then you come find out another guy that went to school together. We all went to school together. There are other guys that went together. I went to school together. The thing is, me and my buddies both go together. But he disappointed me. He said, ah, I'm excited to go to University of Washington. But he had to do what's best for him. I had to do what's best for me. The thing is, it was all about the group. It was all about me now and what I made of. It was wrong. Okay, so remember, yes, we got a lot of people in high school, we you guys are within the group, but my thing is, you got to find out who you are by yourself. Because at the end of the day, it's going to be you that's going to make decisions for yourself. It's going to be you that's going to be the one that's grown. It's going to be you the one that's going to make the decisions where you're going to, like I said, you're going to school or, or how you're going to make it. Okay, now make sure this
pissing off the off the way, it's pissed off the off of you. Alright? Okay? Alright. You take when it comes to cost you have to take a placement test, which is the English uh, test with a math test. And a lot of times our students test at the English 91 level, which is the lowest level of English, and then also basic math. Okay. And a lot of times what happens is those are the lower levels, but things that takes the math and English would take you to get from the shooting college to uh, it takes you longer to get to college. Meaning that uh, like I said, the lower the lower you get to score, the longer it takes you to get the requirements to get you the first uh, couple of three years of college. So City College Census was not a two-year college, the average three years. And we started off at a lower level. Okay. So the main thing is that everything is, you know, we're trying to get adjusted to school and also learning, learning how to survive in school. You get the basic skills of, you know, study. So the basic skills of taking tests. The basic skills of, like I said, just adjusting to college. Any questions from the floor? If not, let's thank Mr. Webster.